Book three of the Battle of Marathon by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com. The Battle of Marathon by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Book three. When from the deep the hour's eternal sway impels the courses of the flaming day the long-haired greeks with brazen arms prepare their freedom to preserve and wage the war first aristides from the couch arose while his great mind with all minerva glows his mighty limbs his golden arms invest the cuirass blazes on his ample breast the glittering creases both his legs enfold and the huge shields on fire with burnished gold his hands to spears uphold of equal size and fame's bright glories kindle in his eyes upon his helmet plumes of horsehair nod and forth he moved majestic as a god upon his snorting steed the warrior sprung the courser neighed the brazen armour rung from heaven's ethereal heights the martial maid with conscious pride heroes might surveyed him as she eyed she shook the gorgon shield henceforth to me she cried let all the immortals yield let monster mars the latian regions own for attica minerva stands alone and now the unconquered chief of justice gains the senate's walls and there the steed detains whence he dismounts miltiades he seeks beloved of jove the leader of the greeks nor sought in vain there clad in armour bright the chieftain stood all eager for the fight within his aged hands two lances shine the helmet blazed upon his brows divine and as he bends beneath the unequal weight youth smiles again when with gigantic might his nervous limbs immortal arms could wield rush foe on foe and raging heap the field yet though such days were past and ruthless age transformed the warrior to the thoughtful sage though the remorseless and of silent time impaired each joint and stiffened every limb yet through his breast the fire celestial stole throbbed in his veins and kindled in his soul in thought the lord of asia threats no more and hippias bites the dust mid seas of gore him as he viewed the youthful hero's breast heaved high with joy and thus the sage addressed chief best beloved of paulus he began in fame allied to gods o wondrous man behold apollo gilds the athenian wall our freedom waits and fame and glory call to battle asia's king and myriads dare swell the loud trump and swell the din of war he said impatient then the warrior sage began regardless of the fears of age not mine o youth with caution to control the fire and glory of thy eager soul so was i wont in brazen arms to shine such strength 
and such impatient fire were mine he said and bade the trumpets peals rebound high and more high the echoing war notes sound sudden one general shout the din replies a thousand lances blazing as they rise and athens banners wave and float along the skies so from the marsh the cranes embodied fly clap their glad wings and cut the liquid sky with thrilling cries they mount their joyful way vigorous they spring and hail the newborn day so rose the shouting greeks inspired by fame to assert their freedom and maintain their name first came themistocles in arms renowned whose steed impatient tore the trembling ground high over his helmet snowy plumes arise and shade that brow which persia's might defies a purple mantle graceful waves behind nor hides his arms but floats upon the wind his mighty form two crimson belts enfold rich in embroidery and stiff with gold callimachus the polymarch next came the theme of general praise and general fame cynagyrus who even the gods would dare heap ranks on ranks and thunder through the war his virtues godlike man's his strength surpassed in battle foremost and in flight the last his ponderous elms a shaggy lion's hide and the huge war axe clattered at his side the mighty chief a brazen chariot bore while fame and glory hail him and adore and tenor next his aid to athens gave like paris youthful and like hector brave cleon minerva's priest experienced sage advanced in wisdom as advanced in age a gregorus delinus favourite child the parents cares the glorious son beguiled but now he leaves his sire to seek his doom his country's freedom or a noble tomb and young aratus moved with youthful pride and heart elated at the hero's side next thou cleones thou triumphant moved by athens honoured by the greeks beloved and cephalinus the echoing pavements trod from youth devoted to the martial god honour unspotted crowned the hero's name unbounded virtue and unbounded fame such heroes shone the foremost of the host all athens glory and all athens boast behind a sable cloud of warriors rise with ponderous arms and shouting rend the skies these bands with joy miltiades inspire fame fills his breast and sets his soul on fire aloft he springs into the gold-wrought car while the shrill blast resounds to war to war the coursers plunge as conscious of their load and proudly name feel they bear a god the snow-white steeds by paulus self were given which sprung from the 
immortal breed of heaven the car was wrought of brass and burnished gold and diverse figures on its bulk were told of heroes who in plunging to the fight shrouded troy's glories in eternal night of fierce pelides who relenting gave at priam's prayer to hector's corpse a grave here spartan helen flies her native shore to bid proud troy majestic stand no more there hector clasps his consort to his breast consoles her sufferings though himself oppressed and there he rushes to the embattled field for victory or death nor even in death to yield the ilium prostrate feels the argive ire her heroes perished and her towers on fire and here old priam breathes his last drawn sigh and feels tis least of all his griefs to die there his loved sire divine aeneas bears and leaves his own with all a patriot's tears while in one hand he holds his weeping boy and looks his last on lost unhappy troy the warrior seized the reins the impatient steeds foam at the mouth and spring where glory leads the gates the heroes pass the athenian dames bend from their towers and bid them save from flames their walls their infant airs and fill the skies with shouts entreaties prayers and plaintive cries echo repeats their words the sounds impart new vigour to each greek's aspiring heart forward with shouts they press and hastening on try the bold lance and dream of marathon meanwhile the persians on the embattled plain prepare for combat and the greeks disdain twice twenty sable bulls they daily pay unequalled homage to the god of day such worthy gifts the wealthy warriors bring and such the offerings of the persian king while the red wine around his altars flowed they beg protection from the flaming god but the bright patron of the trojan war accepts their offerings but rejects their prayer the power of love alone dares rigid fate to vent on greece her vengeance and her hate not love for persia prompts the vengeful dame but hate for athens and the grecian name in phoebus name the fraudful queen receives the hecatombs and happy omens gives and now the heralds with one voice repeat the will of datus echoing through the fleet to counsel to convene the persian train that athens chiefs should brave their might in vain the chiefs and hippias self his will obey and seek the camp the heralds lead the way there on the couch their leader datus sate in ease luxurious and in kingly state around his brow pride deep and scornful played a purple robe his slothful 
limbs arrayed which over his form its silken draperies fold majestic sweeps the ground and glows with gold while artaphernes resting at his side surveys the advancing train with conscious pride the elder leader mighty datus then assembled princes great and valiant men and thou thrice glorious hippias loved by heaven to whom as to thy sire is athens given behold the grecian banners float afar shouting they hail us and provoke the war then mighty chiefs and princes be it yours to warm and fire the bosoms of our powers that when the morn has spread the saffron light the greeks may own and dread darius might for know o chiefs when once proud athens falls when persian flames shall reach her haughty walls from her depression wealth to you shall spring and honour fame and glory to your king he said his words the prince's breasts inspire silent they bend and with respect retire and now the greeks in able marches gain by aulus fired the marathonian plain before their eyes the unbounded ocean rolls and all darius fleet unawed their souls they fix their banners and the tents they raise and in the sun their polished javelins blaze their leader's self within the brazen car their motions orders and prepares for war their labours over the aged hero falls the chiefs to council midst the canvas walls and then the sage how great the persian host but let them not their strength or numbers boast their slothful minds to love of fame unknown sigh not for war but for the spoil alone strangers to honours pure immortal light they not as heroes but as women fight grovelling as proud and cowardly as vain the greeks they fear their numbers they disdain and now athenians fired by glory rise and lift your fame unsullied to the skies your victim persia liberty your prize and now twice twenty sable bullocks bring to heap the altars of the thundering king bid twelve white heifers of gigantic breed to jove's great daughter wise minerva bleed and then in sleep employ the solemn night nor till apollo reigns provoke the fight the hero said the warlike council or they raise the lofty altars on the shore they pile in heaps the pride of all the wood they fall the first who first in beauty stood the pine that soars to heaven the sturdy oak and cedars crackle at each hero's stroke and now two altars stand of equal size and lift their forms majestic to the skies the heroes then twice twenty bullocks bring a worthy offering 
to the thundering king the aged leader seized the sacred knife blow followed blow out gushed the quivering life through their black hides the ruthless steel is driven the victim's groan jove thunders from his heaven and then their bulks upon the pile they lay the flames rush upward and the armies pray driven by the wind the roaring fires ascend and now they hiss in air and now descend with all their sap the new-cut faggots raise their flames to heaven and crackle as they blaze and then the sage o thou of powers above the first and mightiest hear eternal jove give us that athens in her strength may rise and lift our fame and freedom to the skies this said he ceased the assembled warriors pour the sacred incense and the god adore then partial jove propitious heard their prayer thrice shook the heavens and thundered through the air with joy the greeks the favouring sign inspires and their breasts glow with all the warlike fires and now twelve heifers white as snow they lead to great minerva's sacred name to bleed they fall their bulks upon the pile are laid sprinkled with oil and quick in flame arrayed and now descending midst the darkening skies behold the goddess of the radiant eyes the ground she touched beneath the mighty load earth groaning rocks and nature hails the god within her hand her father's lightnings shone and shield that blazes near the eternal throne the greeks with fear her dauntless form surveyed and trembling bowed before the blue-eyed maid then favouring thus began the power divine while in her eyes celestial glories shine ye sons of athens loved by heaven she cries revered by men be valiant and be wise when morn awakes darius numbers dare clang your loud arms and rouse the swelling war but first to yon proud fleet a herald send to bid the persians yield and fight suspend for vainly to their god they suppliant call jove favours greece and aulus wills their fall she said and through the depths of air she flies mounts the blue heaven and scales the liquid skies the greeks rejoicing thank the powers above and jove's great daughter and eternal jove and now a herald to the fleet they send to bid the persians yield and war suspend through the divided troops the herald goes through athens host and through the unnumbered foes before the holy man the persian bands reverend give way and ask what greece demands he tells not all but that he chosen seeks datus their chief by order of the greeks the mission but in part he sage reveals and what his prudence prompts him he conceals then to their chief they lead him where he sate with pomp surrounded and in gorgeous state around his kingly couch his arms were spread flaming in gold by forge cyclopean made and then stern datus frowning thus began what hopes deceive thee 
miserable man what treacherous fate allures thee thus to stray through all our hosts what gods beguile the way thinkest thou to scape the persian steel when greece our herald crushed and banished hopes of peace but speak what will the greeks and do they dare to prove our might and tempt the unequal war or do they deign to own darius sway and yield to persia's might the embattled day to whom the athenian herald made reply the greeks disdain your terms and scorn to fly unknown to heroes and to sons of greece the shameful slavery of a persian peace defiance stern not servile gifts i bring your bonds detested and despised your king of equal size the greeks two altars raise to jove's high glory and minerva's praise the god propitious heard and from the skies descends the goddess of the azure eyes and thus began assembled greeks give ear attend my wisdom nor my glory fear when morn awakes darius numbers dare clang your loud arms and rouse the swelling war but first to yon proud fleet a herald send to bid the persians yield and war suspend for vainly to their god they suppliant call jove favours greece and Paulus wills their fall the goddess spoke the athenians own her sway i seek the fleet and heaven's command obey the greeks disdain your millions in the war nor i o chief your promised vengeance fear strike but remember that the god on high who rules the heavens and thunders through the sky not unrevenged will see his herald slain nor shall thy threats his anger tempt in vain and thus the greek then datus thus replies flames black and fearful scowling from his eyes herald away and asia's vengeance fear back to your frenzied train my mandate bear that greece and grecian gods may threat in vain we scorn their anger and their wrath disdain for he who lights the earth and rules the skies with happy omens to our vows replies when morn up rising breathes their saffron light prepare to dare our millions in the fight thy life i give darius will to say and asia's hate hence chief no more away he said and anger filled the grecian's breast but prudent he the rising wrath suppressed indignant through the canvas tents he strode and silently invoked the thundering god fears for his country in his bosom rose as on he wandered midst unnumbered foes he strikes his swelling breast and hastens on over the wide plains of barren marathon and now he sees the grecian banners rise and well-armed warriors blaze before his eyes then thus he spoke ye grecian bands give ear ye warrior chiefs and attic heroes hear your will to asia's other prince i told all which you bade me chieftains to unfold but paulus vengeance i denounced in vain your threats he scorned and heard with proud disdain the god he boasts who lights the earth and skies with happy omens to his vows replies then when the uprising morn extends her light prepare ye greeks to dare his powers in fight he said the greeks for instant strife declare 
their will and arm impatient for the war then he their godlike chief as paulus sage obey my counsels and repress your rage ye greeks he cried the sacred night displays her shadowy veil and earth in gloom arrays her sable shades even persia's chiefs obey and wait the golden mandate of the day such is the will of jove and gods above and such the order of the loved of jove he said the greeks their leaders word obey they seek their tents and wait the approaching day over either host celestial somnus reigns and solemn silence lulls the embattled plains end of book three recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com <laughs>